Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're just gonna do a little little short hike here at Hereford Manor Lake Bed where we got a few minutes before reality brings us back. And uh, we're just gonna talk about different priced out kits for different brands for wildlife photography. Now in wildlife photography, you're mostly going to be shooting for items that are further away, like birds, birds in flight, deer, hawks, turtles, stuff you don't wanna get near don't want to disturb nature. Now it is available, very cheap, shall we say. So we're gonna try and stay around $500 price point, $1,500 and $4,500, give or take. Some brands will be a little bit more, some brands will be a, bit, a little bit less. Not all brands offer uh, what you might want. So I will mention that and put that out there. I just don't want people to think that you need to be like a multi-millionaire to go to shoot wildlife photography. You can do it for as little or as much as you want. You don't have to invest everything from your 401k into it. So let's get this hike on the road. Let's go check out the lake bed. We got some light snowfall coming in. We probably got about an inch of fresh powder. So it's gonna be a little challenging to walk through. We got about seven, eight inches and I'm in full winter gear here. So I'm probably gonna be sweltering by the time I'm done here, but it's better than freezing. So let's go see what's out there. So the first brand we're going to get into is Nikon. Now I have a cheat sheet for every one of these brands because there's no way I was going to remember all this myself. And if anyone thinks that they can memorize it all, more power to you. Along the bottom of the scroller for the YouTube video, there will be chapters and I'll mark each one of them. So if this uh, Nikon isn't for you, let's check out the other ones that might be useful for what you're looking for, for wildlife photography. So for Nikon, we have a $500 price point for your entry wildlife stuff. We have all the used prices that we mentioned are from MVP, very reputable, trust it uh, to, to buy used camera gear off of all the time. And then I will note in the description of the video a uh, Google link that you can follow to list everything that we talk about for all the different brands and gear and stuff with links to where to buy it from. Since uh, there's you only allowed like four or five thousand characters in the YouTube description, and there's no way all this would fit in there. So, for the five hundred dollar price point at Nikon, we have a used D thirty four hundred. It's perfect to get into. I have a review on that. Another video if you want to check it out. And you can get those used for about two hundred ninety dollars. Then you can buy a used AFS 70 to 300 f 4.5 to 5.6 G IFED VR. Get that for about 200 bucks. Then for your SD card, you can go a little bit smaller, but you might buy a better camera down the road. I suggest getting a 128 gig SD card. You can get a new uh, SanDisk Stream Pro SD card off Amazon for 30 bucks. As before in other videos, the Amazon links are affiliate links. And those will, again, all be in a Google Word document. Links down below. <coughs> that $1,500 price point or less, you have a used D7200. Has pretty reliable and uh, good autofocus system for wildlife. And birds in flight is pretty good for that, too. So then this is where you get into, like, a 150 to 600 the Sigma 150-600 to 600 Contemporary, a used one, you can get for about $700. The 7200, you can get for about $500. I, same SanDisk Extreme Pro as before. Get one of those, be good to go. And then now that we have a little bit more room in our budget, I highly suggest getting a Black Rapid Breathe Curve Strap. I do have a review on that as well in another video if you want to check that out. And I'm pretty much going to suggest that strap for pretty much every camera that has any extra space in the budget because it just makes it so much easier to carry that big 150 to 600 or 200 to 600 lens, 200 to 500 lens, uh, whatever big telephoto lens you're using for wildlife, that's the strap that I highly suggest for it. So for $3,000 or less, I suggest a used Nikon D500. <laughs> Snow's getting all over the paper. 
Uh, you can get them used for about a thousand bucks. I use Nikon D500 grip. I suggest that so that you have basically unlimited battery. Not that DSLRs are bad with battery life anyways, but get the grip. It's only 140 bucks uh, used. And then you get a new ENEL 15B battery off Amazon, $70. A new Tamron 150-600G2 for $1,400. I prefer that one over the Sigma 150 to 2, 150 to 600. My mistake. Uh, just it has more quality of life and stuff. I do have a review on the 150 to 600 from Sigma. If you want to check that out as well, and I kind of go over why I think the Tamron is a better pick if you have uh, the money to spare. Then we have the uh, Sandus Extreme Pro 128 gigabyte CFX. Uh, card. It's about $180. Highly recommend getting a CF Express card for the, the D500. Make your buffer clearing so much faster. It's pretty much unlimited. You get 200 frames in a burst. No one's going to shoot 200 frames in a burst. It's just kind of ridiculous to be honest. And then if you want to get a second card, you can get that same uh, SD cards before. Or I suggest the Kingston V90. It's a UHS-2 card. It's a very, probably one of the fastest, most affordable SD cards you can buy. And as mentioned before, the black rapid curve breathe, you get that new for about $70. So you're looking at about, I think a little bit less than $3,000 for this kit. And most of it's used. Well, I guess half of it's used, but honestly, people take such good care of their camera equipment. There's nothing wrong with buying used. You're, you can't go wrong with it. And then we have the $4,500 price point. Now we're getting to the point where it's just getting kind of insane in prices, but some people will pay it. And and I might not have mentioned at the beginning, but this is only for photography. We're not going to go in depth on videography or cameras that are good for video for wildlife. This is only for photos. Now, for the $4,500 price point, you can get a used D850 for $2,100. A used D850 grip for $270. Get the new battery that I mentioned earlier. The ENEL 15B for $70. The Tamron new 150-600 for $1,400. The Sandus Extreme Pro, the $180. Kingston V90 SD card, $90. And the Black Rapid Curve for $70. Now, I know it seems like a lot of repeating, but I really think it would be useful for someone that doesn't really have a good grasp on what you would want to shoot for when it comes to wildlife. And a lot of people might just want to Go big and go, not go home and get the best they can for their money. Now, of course, if you have ridiculously deep pockets, you get like a Nikon D6 for like four grand and get like a 600 F4 Prime for like 12 grand and you're spend 20 grand on this. And if you're dropping that kind of money, honestly, you probably don't need this video for it. So, well, I hope you do pretty good with all that expensive equipment. Sometimes you just gotta take a minute and enjoy the peaceful surroundings you got. In the wintertime, these pine groves are some of my favorite just to sit in and relax. The sound of silence and snow is kind of deafening. Okay, so we got, we're, up to, we're up to Canon now, and we're just gonna talk at the $500 price point. We have the Canon Rebel T7, $280. We have a used EFS 55 to 250 IS STM lens. It's actually pretty good for the price. It's 160 bucks. Then we have a new Extreme Pro SD card, 64 gigs for $18 off Amazon. Had to make it a little bit smaller to fit in the $500 price budget. For the $1,500 uh, price budget, you're going to either look at a used Canon 7D Mark II or a used 90D. So. These cameras can be like switched in between $1,500 price point and a $3,000 price point. But I mean, I put the, I'd, I'd probably get the 7D Mark II at $1,500. It's a little bit of an older camera. Um, it doesn't have as many megapixels. The buffer is better. The AF system's a little bit better, a little bit worse. You have to research between the 90D and the 7D Mark II to figure out what you want. I think the 7D Mark II might be built a little more rugged too, so. It's also been discontinued, but the 90D hasn't. 
it's a long rabbit hole to go into between the two cameras. There'll be a couple more of those on this list as we go. So for $1,500, say you get the 70 Mark II, you get a used Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary, and a SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 gigabyte SD card. 30 bucks Amazon. So for the $3,000 price point, you can get the 90D again, or the 70 Mark II. So I went with the 90D for this build. So then if you get the 90D, you want to get the 90D grip, so that way you get more battery life out of it. And the 90D is pretty good at video for a DSLR, so you can do a little bit of wildlife video on that if you want it as well. And the second battery in the grip will, will help you out on that, because it'll drain the batteries pretty quick. So then the second battery is the LPE6N battery for 100 bucks. Then you're going to want a new Tamron 150-600G2 for 1400 the SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 gig, and then again, the black rapid curve strap. For the $4,000 or less for Canon, uh, you can get a new Canon R6, the mirrorless camera, which obviously does photo and video very well. So if you want to do wildlife video on Canon, this is what you need to spend to get really good video on it, to be honest. Now, I put in here again the LPE6 and H battery. So you're gonna need a second battery, mirrorless. It goes for a little bit more battery than the DSLR. It's not terrible, but you're gonna want a second battery. You're gonna want a new Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary. The Tamrons, for some reason, don't really talk too well through the adapter for a uh, Canon for some reason. I don't have an explanation for that. Then you're gonna want the Canon EF to RF adapter for 100 bucks. You're gonna want dual cards for the uh, R6 SD cards, Kingston V90 128 gig SD cards, 90 bucks each, so $180 give or take. Uh, the other day I did see that there was a special for two of those for like 170 something, so that might be still available when you see this video. Then Black Rapid Curves Breathe again. So we have like a fourth place on here. If uh, you don't want a mirrorless camera and you're happy with a 90D or a 70 Mark II, you can get a used Canon EF 500F4L USM Prime lens used for about $2,900. Then you get the grip, the battery as mentioned before, and the same SD card, and the black rapid curve strap because that's a big lens and you don't want to be carrying it out just, you know, by the foot, by hand. You're going to get tired and drop that thing. So that's about $4,500, so you can go that route and get a Prime if you wanted. So it's something you got to consider if you want a Prime or not. And the reason why I did not suggest like the 600 F11 or the 800 F11 with the R6 is because when you're in the forest taking wildlife photos, it's going to be dark, it's already F11, it's just... Everyone says you can jack the ISO up and get an image. Sure, you can, but I'd rather get a 150 to 600 at 6.3 instead of f11 at like ISO 1600 or 3000 instead of like 5 or 10,000. If you want to save some money, a little bit of money, like honestly pennies, get one of those over a Sigma 150 to 600 for your R6. Have at it, but personally, I, I don't think they're a good investment. This is the remains of the lower dam, the lower lake here at uh, Hereford Manor. About 20 feet from where the shore would have been, about 10 feet underwater. And they used to have an earthen dam, but they took it out due to safety concerns and we're just left with a giant field. But might not be able to kayak and fish here as much anymore, but uh, there's a lot of wildlife that still use the, uh, the lake bed now that's pretty much turned into a frozen swamp in the wintertime. So for this part, we're going to do uh, Olympus and Panasonic. So they have interchangeable lenses that work on both bodies for the newer cameras. Uh, there's, it's kind of hard to get um, a good price for Micro Four Thirds, as that's what this is. Micro Four Thirds, as we all know, smaller than crop, smaller than full frame. Their 600 prime is like a 300 prime, and it's like this big. But if uh, you're going on hiking, a lot of exploring, a lot of mountain climbing, Micro Four Thirds is pretty great for that since it's so small and light. So for $500 we're looking at a used Olympus EM-1 for $250, a used Lumix G Vario 45-150, it's $100. Now keep in mind it's a Micro Four Thirds so to get the full frame equivalent multiply all the focal lengths by two. 
So the 45 to 150 would be a 90 to 300. I'm terrible at math, so get a calculator and check that. Then you get a new SanDisk Extreme Pro SD card from Amazon for 30 bucks. It's your $500 price point. For $1,500, it kind of gets confusing with a $3,000 setup because you can use the Olympus EM1 Mark II or a used Lumix G9. Both used, by the way. Uh, for the $1,500 price point, I went with the EM1 Mark II just to keep it simple. So, you have the EM Mark II, $700, the used Lumix G Vario 100-300, which is a 200-600, F4-5-6, Power OIS Mark II for $470. Now, I know I'm going to butcher these names. I am not great with Olympus and Panasonic, but a couple good friends on Discord helped me put this together, and I'm very appreciative of them helping me with that. So then you would have the new SanDisk Extreme Pro 128GB SD card and the black wrap curve brief. Now you might not need a shoulder strap for Micro Four Thirds, but after using that strap for like four years now, nothing comes close. For the $3,000 or less, I'd go after the used Lumix G9 for $850, used Olympus M Zuko 100-400 for $1,300, that's a $200-800 equivalent. New uh, dual cards, SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 SD cards, so it'd be $60, you get two of them, and then the strap, black rapid strap, that's a $3,000 price point. For the $4,500 price point, you can get a EM1 Mark III for $1,200, a used Olympus M Zuko ED300 F4 IS Pro for $1,500, so it's like a 600 F4 Prime at that point. I used Olympus M Zuko 1.4 Teleconverter MC14. It's $250. Check eBay. It's not on MVP. I don't even think I've ever seen one for sale on MVP. Then you're going to need the dual cards again from Standard Extreme Pro. So $60 from that. And the camera strap. So, I mean, honestly... Some people live and die by Micro Four Thirds, and other people kind of crap on it, saying it's not good for wildlife, it's a small sensor. If anyone says that, they are the, the dumbest person you've probably ever met. The dumbest. Like, if you know how to use a camera, and you have a decent lens, you can get some amazing photos if you know what you're doing. So, don't let anyone gear shame you and say one brand's better than the other, one sensor size is better than the other, because at the end of the day, all that matters is if you get your shot, and it looks clean and good and you know what you're doing and you're learning and having fun. It does not matter if you're shooting on a GFX 50 and you're getting ridiculous landscapes and you can zoom in from 20 millimeters to 600 millimeters and still have like a 20 megapixel image because they got medium format sensors and you think you're great for that. Don't, don't fall into that trap. Just get the camera gear that's good for you. So the other night, it went down to about negative 12, and today it's about 30. So in a 24-hour period, we've gone up 40 degrees, and it's uh, still snowing. And went up 40 degrees, and it's still snowing. It's just kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? It's kind of funny though because you uh, get used to the cold weather, and you get then it gets warm, you know, like today, and you think. Boy, it's getting kind of toasty out today. It's actually not bad, you know? It's, it's nice and warm out. There's nothing crazy going on. Don't have a blizzard or anything. Just kind of just taking it all in. A little spicy today. So we move on to Fujifilm. Fujifilm and wildlife uh, doesn't really mix too well. 
mostly because the money you spend on Fuji for wildlife is probably spent on other brands, so just something to keep in mind. There's really only two price points you can get on a Fuji for modern cameras for mirrorless, because that's all they have. And Fuji is, again, micro four thirds. So for Fuji, we have a $2,000 price point. We don't really have any entry point uh, price point for them. You have a used X-T3 for $950, a used XF 70-300 for the 5.6R, $800 on eBay, not on MVP. And then you can get the uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro SD cards and then the Black Rapid camera strap. And then for the $3,500 price point, you can get a used X-T4 for $1,400, a used XF100 to 400, 45 to 56 for $1,300, and a used XF1.4 teleconverter for $410. And then, of course, you get the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Black Rapid Curve Brief. Now, one thing to keep in mind, since it is a uh, smaller sensor, with the 1.4 on top of the crop, you're going to have like some ridiculous distance on that. But also, it's going to be like, I mean, yeah, f5.6 isn't bad. Once you put teleconverter on it, you're going to lose a lot of light. And when you're in the wildlife business, you don't really usually have a lot of light to deal with unless it's dusk and dawn and the light's perfectly on your subject. So, honestly, if you want to get in the wildlife, I, I probably wouldn't suggest Fuji. Unless you really like Fuji, you do a lot of street, you really like their film emulations that they have built into the cameras. And that's, that's really all there is to say about Fuji. So take that as you wish. Personally, I wouldn't suggest it for wildlife. Sorry about that, I was getting distracted by the uh, little songbirds were over here in the brush. So, the next one we're going to do is Minolta. A brand that most people don't think about anymore. So Minolta used Sony A-mount, or in reality if you want to think about it, Sony used Minolta's A-mount. A-mount, uh, for the most part, is kind of like what we would call a dead system. No one is making A-mount cameras anymore. They're not going to be updated. They're kind of like end of life. But you can get pretty good camera gear for a pretty cheap price if you go to A-mount with uh, Minolta. <clears throat> so we have most of these are going to be Sony SLTs. SLTs are basically like a mirrorless DSLR, if that makes any sense. There's no mirror in there, but it kind of feels and controls and operates like a DSLR. Honestly, I've never used one. I've seen people use one. I know people that have used them. They work fine, but I mean, they're older technology, and as I said, they're pretty much end of life. So, let's get into it. For $400 or less, you can get the Sony A57 off eBay for $165, the Tokina 400 F56 ATX SDAF for $100 on eBay, it's a prime, might be good. Then you get the uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Black Rapid Curve Breathe as other setups. For $600, you get the Sony A77 for $400, the Tokina 456 as in the uh, the previous setup for $100 off eBay and then you get the same SD card in the Black Rapid Curve Breathe. Now the only reason why this exact same build as the previous one is for an extra $200 you get a much better camera so it's kind of why it's the next price up. So for a thousand dollars or less you get a Sony A99 $800 off eBay the Minolta 100 to 400 APO lens for $180. Then you have the SanDisk SD card and the Black Rapid camera strap. Then for $1,200 or less, you can get the Sony A77 Mark II off eBay for $600. 
the Tamron 200 to 500 5663 SPAF DILDIF for 450 off eBay. And then the SD cards and the Black Rapid Curve camera strap. Now, as mentioned with the Fuji cameras, those were very high end cameras, very pricey for wildlife. Now, if you're starting out and you just want to dabble in photography for wildlife, I'd probably lean towards, maybe biased because I like Nikon, I'd probably lean towards the Nikon entry $500 setup. But if you want to spend a little bit less, get more reach, and you don't mind using a system of cameras that isn't going to be updated anymore, you can go for the Minolta for $400 or less. So, honestly, they take really good pictures. It's just the autofocus might not be the best. The low light not be the best. The ISO isn't the best. And for a entry camera for $500 or less, I'm going to keep telling people to go for the D3400, D3500, or the D3300 because those sensors are very strong in those cameras for the price. But the negative is for $500, you don't really get a whole lot of reach. So you do get a lot more reach on a Minolta for the money. It's a lot of conundrums you got to think about when you're going into buying a camera. Because you don't want to just think about what you have now. You want to think about what you're going to get in the future. So if you want to stay in the photography for the long term, and you buy a bunch of Minolta A-mount stuff, and you know in the future you're going to spend more money, just just don't go into Minolta because there's it's, it's going to hinder you like you wouldn't believe. You won't be able to buy new equipment. So all, overall, I'd probably stick to uh, Panasonic and Olympus. Nikon, Canon, or Sony. I probably avoid Minolta and Fuji for wildlife. But if you already have it and you use it, you take great pictures, hey, more power to you. I want to see what you get. At least in the winter time, the ground's nice and soft. So, next on our list, Sony. Sony's kind of a hard one to really get uh, a budget-friendly uh, wildlife setup in. So really, you got a used A6000 old camera. Really, isn't that great? Uh, especially not great compared to like DSLRs of its price range. Doesn't shoot 4K video, shoots 1080p. Again, A6000 for 330 bucks. I used Sony E55-210 OSS for about $130 and a SanDisk 64 gigabyte SD card for 11 bucks. That's, that's really all you got. Not a whole lot going on for Sony in that price range. So then for $1,500, we get the Sony A6400 get about used for $750, $800. It's actually a really good camera for that price range. You can get the Tamron 70-300 to Sony E-mount for $500. And uh, honestly, 300 is pretty short for wildlife. You can make it work sometimes if you're in a blind or if you're very sneaky. It can be okay. Then you have the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 SD card again. Honestly, the only only time where Sony gets like competitive for reach and abilities for the camera body when it comes to mirrorless wildlife photography, since all Sony Alphas are mirrorless, they don't have a DSLR. Here's a three thousand dollar price point: the Sony A7 III for fifteen hundred dollars used. You get the Sigma 100 to 400, nine hundred dollars used. Sorry, nine hundred dollars new off of Amazon. Kingston V90 128 SD cards for 90 bucks off Amazon, and then the Black Rapid Curve camera strap. Now, 400 again gets kind of short for wildlife, and I'm trying to stick to native mounts for the cameras. Yes, you can get a cheap Sigma 150 to 600 used with an adapter. It works okay, it's not the greatest, it doesn't work as well as EF to RF on Canon. So on Sony, try to stick to native mounts. But uh, you have to excuse me, I'm like out of breath carrying all this stuff through the snow. 
it's kind of sad. I'm out of shape. So for $4,500 price point, you have the A9-1. So a Sony used A9, $2,400. The new Sony 200-600 is an extremely nice lens. New for $1,900. The Kingston V90, $90. Again, then the Black Rabbit strap as well. Now, none of these lists and combinations are gospel. You can pick and choose and splice in between and use different lenses you want. This is not the Bible of camera gear for wildlife. This is just to get you a head start on what there is out there to use. So, if you have any questions about what I have said in the video, please leave it down in the description. Um, I'll get back to you if you have any questions. If you want to ask, like, what about X camera versus X camera, or this brand versus this brand, leave a comment in, down below and we'll, we'll hash it out. And I hope I can give you some assistance. And if you uh, want to join a Discord, there's a Discord invitation down below for f uh, photo and video photography and filmmaking discord it's great thousands of active members thousands of messages a day asking anything you want some will be there sometime of the day to help you out so hopefully this video was useful for you hopefully you got something out of it i enjoy you guys watching this i enjoy making the videos i enjoy having an excuse to come out here and walk around which really is an excuse i'd probably just do it anyways but uh, yeah, if you get one of these, if you use my affiliate links, I really appreciate you. If you get it off MBP and everything is used, even better for you. That's great. Get out there, get snapping, get your pictures, show your friends and family, and it's, it's just like an, it's a good, it's a healthy hobby. It gets you outdoors, gets you to see things, it gets you to notice the environment that you haven't seen before. So with that being said, happy shooting. I'll see you out there. Good luck.